The French advanced variation is probably the most annoying line of the French defense, and a lot of people just quit playing the French because of this line. It gets a lot of space for white, and it's difficult to play in a cramped position as black. But today I'm going to teach you guys a very interesting sideline that you can play as black, and it's a simple solution to all the problems that the French defense players find in the annoying advanced variation. But before we start talking about the moves, I'd like to ask you guys to subscribe to the channel and like the video if you like it. Now let's go to the moves. I'm going to show you guys here the starting position of the French defense. Your opponent is going to play e4 and you start the French defense, defense by playing e6. Your opponent is probably going to play d4, you play d5. We have to understand the nature of the position. A lot of people don't like to play the French because this pawn right here is blocking the bishop. And this is a liability of the French defense. This French bishop that we call, it's a liability. It's a problem that we have to solve. So in many lines of the French, we want to trade this bishop down for this bishop, the light squared bishops, uh, as soon as possible. And in this sideline, I'm going to teach you guys is a very interesting way to trade this bishop and solve this issue of the French bishop. Okay, so uh, the advanced variation starts with e5. White's going to advance this pawn, closing the position, making it difficult for black to develop the pieces. This knight can come to this very natural square here, and it's very hard to find some space. So we're going to try and play here on the queen side of the board. And the first expansion we're going to make is by playing the move c5. So far, so good. This is the most common line. Uh, white's probably going to play c3, but here comes the difference, guys. We're not going to play the typical line where black plays like knight here and queen here. We're going to play a different line where we're going to play this move knight e7. So the idea here is to maneuver this knight all the way to the other side of the, of the board, to the queen side. So we're going to have this knight sitting over here. But you might be wondering, hey, Victor, but why don't I just play this knight over here if I want a knight in that place? Yeah, but we're going to understand why. We want this knight to be here blocking this diagonal, so white's not going to have a check with the queen here in this position, and we want this knight to remain here, so they are going to, we're going to use it to recapture our light squared bishop when we want to trade it. You're going to understand this in a moment. So white's probably going to develop their knight, knight to f3. We're going to play our move knight uh, e to c6. This is our plan all the way, move the knight from the king side to the queen side of the board. And here, uh, more often than not, white's going to play this move bishop d3. We're going to see what to do in case white plays this move right here, a3, preparing the move uh, b4. But we're not going to t talk about this right now. Let's talk about the bishop first. So bishop to d3 is the most natural and common move in the master level and amateur levels. This is the most common move. White's preparing to castle in this position. And here, our idea is we're going to play this move right here. We're going to play b6 and place this bishop here. So we're going to trade the light square bishops. This light square bishop is a very bad piece of ours and it's a good piece for white. So they have the light square bishop is a good bishop for them. We're going to trade our bad piece for a good piece of white. And we're going to use this knight to recapture over here. So our idea is to play b6, bishop here, trade bishops. So we're going to recapture with the knight here. Okay, so uh, we're going to play the move b6, planning to play the bishop out and trade the bishops. White's probably going to castle. We're going to play bishop to a6. And white has nothing better than just taking our bishop. We're going to, uh, in that case, recapture with the knight. In case they just try to move this bishop away, the rook here will be uh, captured, so they have to take this bishop, they have no other choice. So they take the bishop, we take back with the knight, and here white's going to play this move queen to a4. And here you can see guys that it's actually attacking this knight right here, and it's kind of attacking, x-raying our king over there. So it's interesting because this knight that we moved all the way to the queen side of the board is now protecting this diagonal. And if this knight would, would be here, let's imagine if this knight were there, then th that would be actually, you know, a fork and we would be losing a piece. So that's why in the first place we place this knight right here to protect this diagonal, to cover this diagonal. So in this case, 
white cannot simply go and and place and take this uh sorry take this knight over here we're going to move knight our, our knight back now protecting this knight so they can't take it as well with the queen and um here uh, white is going to develop the bishop bishop to e3 we're going to play queen to d7 and here it's very important we're kind of preparing some discoveries here and if white's not aware the best move for them here is to just retreat the queen some somewhere but if they uh, play, for example, knight b to d2, which is actually the most common move according to the Lee Chess database, here we have a very interesting tactic to win a pawn, and you can pause the video if you want to try to find it yourself. This is a very typical uh, trap in the French defense, and it happens a lot, but usually you have a bishop here, you, have, you would have the bishop here, and this trick also works, but now we have the queen. So the move is knight takes pawn over here. So when we take e5, they don't have time to recapture uh, with the, the, the knight or with the pawn here because the queen is hanging. This queen is not defended. So they are forced to actually take our queen. If they do anything else, they lose their queen. So they're going to take our queen. And when they do so, we're going to recapture with the knight. Uh, so we are up a pawn in this position. It's already uh, really good for black in this position. So. White might try to take the pawn over there. We can take back with the pawn. Actually, taking with the knight or with the bishop is okay. It's playable. And according to the, the engine, it's just a little bit worse. Uh, engine prefers taking with the pawn. But you can take with either piece, and it's going to be very much similar, pretty similar here. Um, in case knight b3, we're going to play knight c6 and keep developing our pieces. Rook a to d1, for example, we're going to play bishop out. And uh, we don't even have to castle in this position. Let's imagine uh, they centralize the rooks. We play a5, trying to go for some kind of attack here. They're going to uh, prevent that by play, playing, uh, for example, here a4 or moving the, the knight away. Uh, and then after a move like rook to b8, putting the rook here, attacking the knight, and they move the knight away. We can continue this game by playing moves like king here, king to e2, for example. We don't even have to castle here. We can try to double up the rooks here on this semi-open file. And we have freedom to maneuver our pieces here as well. We can start expanding more. This is a great position for black. And according to the engine, this is actually minus two for black. It's a great position for us. But let's imagine in this position right here, instead of playing this move, uh, bishop to d3, uh, white goes for this move, uh, a3. If they go for a3, they're preparing to play this move right here, next move, and then our plan of playing the bishop here and trying to trade is not going to work. So we have to react to this move immediately. So whenever you see a3 on the board, you have to re respond immediately by playing a5, preventing this move right here from happening. In case they play it, you're just going to recapture, right? And they can't do that. In case they play here, uh, this move, and, and you, you just capture, they can't recapture because the rook would be uh, dropping, okay? So in this case right here, we have to play a5. Uh, opponent's probably going to then play bishop to d3. You play b6, following our plan of trading the light squared bishops. They castle, we play bishop to a6, trade the bishops. And white's going to continue developing the same fashion here. We're going to play bishop to e7, trying to castle next move. And this is also a great move, a great position for black. We can continue expanding here, uh, pushing our pawns. It's a great position for black. That's how I play against the advanced variation. If you want, don't want to go mainline, this move is very interesting after your opponent uh, pushes the pawn. And you have these typical moves right here instead of developing the knight and queen here in the, in the common fashion in the main line, you're going to play this move knight to e7, surprising your opponents because this was played like 2% uh, of the, the games, so your opponents might not be prepared for this, probably they are not prepared against this, and you're going to have an edge, an edge against your opponents because you know theory better than them, and your intentions are trading the bishops, your bad bishop for their good bishop, and expanding on the queen side uh, against your opponent. So, okay, guys, that's basically the, the line that I play against the French advanced variation. Uh, if white plays the advanced, that's how I usually play. And I get some really nice results with it. 
And if you like this video, please remember you can like the video and comment down below. I would love to see your opinions on this position. And I always, as always, see you guys in the next video.